What's going on everybody, Zach Baker here from Baker Builds and today we're going to be doing the first bait build video of 2024. And what we'll be doing is taking this flat piece of basswood, using the laser cutter to cut out the shape of the bait, gluing it all together and of course paint and clear coat. Now when we're done, the bait's going to look just like this. We'll probably do a different paint pattern on it, but it's gonna be a flat sided shallow diving crankbait. I was inspired by all the balsa bait build videos I've seen on YouTube with the traditional method of making a bait where you take two pieces, carve out the inside for your hardware, glue them together, and then you have a wooden hard body, hard body bait. So I was thinking if you can glue two pieces of wood together, not, why not glue multiple pieces of wood together? So the idea was sometimes I'll build a bait and it works out perfectly and I have trouble replicating it. So with this method, I should be able to replicate it almost identically every single time because the shape of the bait is cut out by a machine. Some people might claim this isn't a handmade bait. I don't care, I enjoy doing it. I really hope you guys find this video entertaining because I have a ton of different ideas on baits and I want to do like a, a YouTube viewer me building collaboration. I have a really cool idea for like a hard body jig kind of. So a bait that sinks to the bottom and you work it kind of like a jig, but we'll build it out of wood using this method I'm gonna show you guys today. So while you see this and see how I'm making it, if you have any cool ideas, I'm gonna post another video that'll be kind of showcasing that design and that idea and get some feedback from you guys and we'll build a new bait together. With that said, I'm going to hop over to the computer and the laser, get a piece of wood put on there and get this bait build started. Okay, we got all of our pieces cut out here and I'm going to lay them out in the order that they will be glued together. So just like our balsa bait, which I'll lay over here for reference, here's another one that I was messing with. So the center part is our important piece. I've got the cutouts for the line ties, which right now I'm just using the little screw in ones versus handmade ones because I'm really looking for consistency especially when I'm making a new bait, I like everything, like the weight and everything to be the same on each one. That way, whatever changes I make are intentional. And if it makes the bait swim different, I know that adding the weight or moving the weight is what caused it, not I made a slightly bigger, slightly smaller line tie. So I do like using the pre-made line ties whenever it's a new bait that I'm working on. So those three lines are for the line ties. The little hole right there is for some lead weight and the big cutout is for some little plastic rattles which we'll be putting inside and again right now i'm just using some pre-made manufactured stuff rather than do my own i think eventually we'll do some like aluminum from a soda can inside there with just some normal bbs to get to get a little bit louder of a rattle but for now that's what i've been doing now we're going to go ahead and glue this all together but i still need to get access to the inside of the bait so rather than gluing all the pieces together at the same time we're going to glue these three together and we'll be gluing these two pieces together. And what that'll do is give us access to the inside so we can add in the weight and the rattle, and then we'll come back and glue all four pieces together, or all five, and then finish shaping the bait. So for the longest time, I was using these little clamp things, just some normal wood gluing clamps, which works pretty good, but I got tired of having 15 of these laying around, 15 of these going around the side of the bait. So what I got instead, was these little mountable, these little tabletop mounting wood clamps, which whenever you squeeze these down, they go into place and it locks in really tight. So that's what I've been using for these. It seems like I get a really nice even pressure along the bait. 
So a piece of parchment paper in case any wood glue spills over, it doesn't get glued down to my clamping table. And then for glue, we're just going to be using some normal standard Gorilla wood glue. So I always just leave the first outside piece there and then I put glue on the back side of this one. That way I'm skipping the holes. Now most of the time with glue, the more glue the better, but when it comes to wood glue, you want a really nice, even, thin layer of it. Otherwise you're just gluing glue to glue. You need it to be able to soak into that wood. I'm just gonna set that piece in place. Grab this one. And then instead of gluing just this and then come back, coming back and gluing these, what I'm gonna do is not put any glue on this piece and we'll just set it in place. And another thing that I'll do to help keep everything lined up is I got a piece of the plexiglass that we're going to be making the bill out of later. And I just kind of slide that in place to make sure all the cutouts for the lured lip are the same because I don't want to sand that out anymore later and end up with a loose fitting lured lip. Now if you do go to use these little tabletop vices like this, it's important to apply pressure at the exact same time because if I just push this one down, it's gonna kind of pull all those layers that direction. Same thing on this side. So I like to do both at the same time. That way the bait stays nice and even. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And water, instead of getting warm water, uh, I'm going to be sanding all this later. So I just kind of wipe the glue clean along the edge. So with everything clamped in place, I'm going to let this sit and cure. Now the wood glue itself, you're supposed to let it sit for 24 hours before applying any sort of pressure. However, this stuff sets up in 20 to 30 minutes, but it does say to allow 24 hours for it to completely cure. Within a half hour or so, it's going to be glued enough for us to move on to step two. So I'll be back once the glue is set in place. All right, so we're well past that half hour mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this baby free. and we did not have any glue run down and get the two pieces stuck together. So we're ready to move on to the next step, which will be adding the rattle and the lead weight. So as I showed you guys a minute ago, I just use these little plastic rattles with the BBs inside. The little tab there, oop, that's meant to go onto a skirt. I just use my little Dremel tool and sand that right off. And now that will slide right in place. And once it's glued together, it has a nice little subtle rattle. Next thing we're going to be doing is moving over to our workbench over there and we're going to use the lead pot to add some lead weight into the bait. Okay, this has is glued. And here's where we are so far. You can hear the rattle. Hold it up by the camera or by the microphone there so you can hear it. Next step, and I'm probably going to regret this, but I'm going to move my belt sander over here to the painting table because the lighting's so much better. That way you guys can see exactly what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to sand gently all along the outside edge and we'll come back in with the Dremel tool and get some of these little curves that's hard to do on the belt sander. And there's 
where we are. Next, I'm going to go ahead and take my Dremel tool and I'm going to use the sander on it to get where these curves are because it's hard to do that on the flat belt sander. That is good enough for me. A lot of this is going to, on the back here, is going to get sanded away. I'm gonna be bringing both sides in there to make the back of the bait skinnier. Front of the bait will stay pretty fat. Uh, with these little bit of parts, a little bit of stuff that's left over there, uh, will get sanded away here in a bit. Next step, it's time to taper the bait. Front of the bait's gonna be fat and it's going to taper down pretty skinny in the back. And for that, so I can keep everything consistent, I cut out a little stencil. So I'm just gonna hold that in place, make sure it's even on both sides and flat up front. And there we go, it looks to be pretty symmetrical. So I'm going to bring the belt sander back and we're just going to sand those sides in. Now we got that nice taper going on, front of the bait is a little bit fatter than the back. Next thing I'm going to do is pretty simple. The whole shape of this bait is pretty simple. We don't do any sort of crazy forming or shaping to it, but what I am going to do is use the belt sander and kind of knock off this sharp edge here, because I'm going to round over the edges. I'm gonna do that on the top and on the bottom of the bait, but nothing too dramatic, because we're trying to keep it a very simple build, simple shape, and it makes it easy to replicate in the future. And here's where we're at with the bait. As you can see, almost that whole first layer of wood is completely gone on the back of the bait there. So that's where having good glue comes in useful. Next thing I'm going to do is do uh, some hand sanding. We're gonna start off with 120 grit sandpaper. Is getting rid of all the sanding marks, both from the belt sander and from the Dremel tool, along with rounding over the edges perfectly. So there's no hard spots and gives the bait a nice shape and feel. All right, we did some sanding with the 120 and then I moved on to the 220. And now I'm just doing one final sanding with some 600 grit sandpaper, which is pretty fine, but it does give a better paint job later on and your clear coat and everything when the whole bait's nice and smooth. So I'm gonna do a few more minutes of sanding with this and we'll move back over to the laser cutter and uh, do the scales and gill plate and everything. So I do have a pretty decent laser. However, it does not have a good way of lining stuff back up. So my method for fixing that is I put a piece of paper down, two of our little plugs there to hold it in place. And then on the computer here, so you can see our cut file here, what I'm going to do is hide our image, which is the gill plate. And I'm going to select just the outline of the bait and run that as its own file. And what that's gonna do is give me a perfect outline or template on where to lay the bait. That way the scale pattern will line up perfectly. The other thing I've been doing is numbering my baits. So I'm keeping track of which one got done at what time. So today's bait for this YouTube video is actually gonna be number 10. I'll change that to the same cut file as the scale pattern. And we'll drop it right there. I want to kind of throw it at an angle so it fits in there a little bit better. And then going to select. I'm going to keep our image off and we're going to select the red first. Run that.
And with the scales ran, we can turn our image back on. Select just the image and send that to cut to. And the reason I do it in two different layers like that is because the scales will end up way too deep or they're too fat if I run them as like a normal engraving file, which is what the gill plate and the mouth and everything is. So I get a finer cut whenever I run it as just a line, like it's trying to cut through the wood, but the power is turned down so low that it only cuts barely into the surface. And there we go. Nice gill plate and scales. So now that's all that's left to do is flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And there we go, scales and the gill plate and everything, even the mouth, all lasered engraved. And once we paint, it will cover up some of that dark, but there's enough of a groove there, just like the normal hard body plastic blanks that we'd buy, uh, that it still shows up through the paint. So what I'm going to do now is loosely screw in one of our line ties, which I'm gonna do it on the back here, to be able to grab it with a little pair of clamps. And then what we gotta do is seal the bait. So I've got just some normal polyacrylic, crystal clear top coat, durable, and my favorite part, fast drying. So I'm going to give the bait a good dip in this. That's gonna seal the wood. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to give it another real light sanding in that 600 grit sandpaper. Dunk it one more time and then we'll be ready to glue in our line ties and then of course paint. So you can see it's a little bit shinier now. The wood has been sealed and I just did another real light sanding with some 600 grit sandpaper and I'm wearing gloves so I don't get my oils from my fingers all over the bait, which would affect our painting job later on. Uh, what we're going to do now is glue in the line ties. Now I've been using this Gorilla Glue for this and it seems to be working really good. I have plenty of work time with it and it seems to harden up very well. I do think that two part epoxy is a little bit better, but I do have trouble gluing it in or I never feel like I get enough glue in the bait with the two part epoxy. So I've been using this, I get a lot more glue in there and seems to be holding up just fine. If there's another glue like this, it's not a two-part epoxy that has like the little squeeze tip like this one does, let me know, because I am on the hunt for something that's super durable. So far though, I have not had any of these, I've actually never had a line tie pull out, so, uh, but as far as I'm wanting to sell some of these eventually, I want to make sure that the, the glue won't be a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these glued in. Okay, all three line ties are screwed in. Well, one line tie and two, two spots for the hooks there. While we wait for this glue to set, I'm going to show you guys how I make the lure lips for it. And then we'll come back and do a nice paint job. For the lure lips, I've just got some of the plexiglass that you can pick up at Lowe's. And all I do for these guys is I lay out some masking tape. And then I got a little stencil here and you guessed it, cut out by the laser. I'm just gonna lay that in place and go ahead and trace the shape of the lip on there. So I actually didn't need the second piece of tape. I'll just take that right off there. Now, if you're like me and you build baits but don't have a bandsaw, uh, 
You can get one of these guys, it's a little scoring thing. Also, a Zacto knife works just fine. But you just take this and score it right where you want it to be cut. So for us, we'll be snapping it. Now, normally, I would stick one end of this in my vise. Uh, but since we're here, I'm going to try to just do it this way. That long pair of those pliers, and you just give it a little twist, and it snaps right where you scored it. You can see I scored it in two spots right there. Pretty cool. Oh no. That's really close on that first one. <laughs> and you might be wondering how come I don't just laser cut the lure lip? Well, it takes a. It takes like a CO2 laser, which is way out of the Baker Builds budget, at least right now, to be able to cut plastics. Mine can cut acrylic, but it can't cut clear acrylic. So I'm still making the lure lips by hand, and maybe eventually someday uh, Baker Builds can get a fancier laser that can laser cut some lure lips. But for now, for now we're gonna do it this way, which I'm kind of rushing it, so you can see that kind of messed that up there a little bit. That's okay though, we still got two ready to go. And all I do is take them to the belt sander, I sand up as close as I can to the edge, and then do some hand sanding to get rid of the belt marks from the belt sander. And then we have a fancy lure lip. So I will do that, and then we will come back and get this bait painted. And finally, it is time to give this bad boy a beautiful paint job. I think a color scheme we're gonna go with, whoop, something similar to this guy right here. Do some yellows, blues, orange, and then black. And wanted to show you guys uh, this company, I think it's pronounced Netico, uh, sent me this airbrush to try out. So this will be the first YouTube video uh, lure painting. I've painted one bait with it so far, and it seemed to work out great. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a paint. And then we're going to do a full in-depth video about this airbrush showcasing. They run for around $40, and it comes with a bunch of extra needles and all that good stuff. But they shot me a message the other day, said, hey, we got an airbrush we think you would like. Can we send it to you and give us your honest opinion? So today we'll be painting this bait with it and I will paint a couple more and then we can do a full length video showcasing the airbrush in itself. But for this bait, we're going to start off with a base coat of white. I don't want this one to have any wood color to it. So we'll probably do a couple layers in the white and we'll come back in with some yellow. Next color up is a Wicked Colors Bismuth Yellow. It's opaque. And I went ahead and flipped the bait over because we're going to cover the entire bottom of the bait in that yellow. And then we're going to carry it up about even with the number 10 there, and we'll have it fade into a blue. I'm also going to try to keep it off the gill plate because I want that to be uh, mostly blue later. There is going to be some overspray. I'm not too worried about being that precise with it. But in other words, I'm not going to cover the gill plate completely. I'm gonna kind of stop a little bit before it. Next color is going to be an iridescent turquoise and we're going to cover whatever's left in the bait that's still white. We're going to give it a nice coat in the iridescent turquoise. I'm going to let it kind of fade into that yellow so we'll get a little bit of a green color which turquoise can be hit or miss on whether it's blue or green I guess anyways. But the colors layered on top of each other we will get a little bit of a green hue wherever I cover on that yellow. But going to cover the whole gill plate, whatever's left that is still white is going to be iridescent blue. Okay, next up, we're going to take a clean paper towel, take our bait off of the display stand, or not the display stand, but the the little clamp holder 
The next color up is going to be an iridescent scarlet. We're going to be taking a Baker Builds original <laughs> custom stencil here. If you guys want one, I don't mean to be annoying, but if you guys want one, I'll have them uh, available on my website, linked in the description below. If you don't have one of these, but maybe you do have one of these stencils, which a lot of different blank manufacturers or blank companies carry the stencil, uh, this little section up in here on the stencil will also get the job done. So if you already have one of these, uh, you should be able to use it. Today I'm going to be using one of my custom ones, one of my stencils. And what we're going to do is hold it in place and we're going to take this iridescent scarlet and I'm going to cover, try to cover everywhere that's yellow. All the yellow is going to have the scarlet on there and it's going to kind of come up under the gill plate just a little bit. So I'll be keeping this color mostly on the bottom half of the bait. And while we are here with the orange, I'm gonna go ahead and do up here by the line tie and then down to the first hook tie. I'm gonna do a little bit of that in the orange as well. And I always like doing on my baits, whatever color I have up here on the front on the belly. I like to do just a little hint of that back here on the back uh, hook tie. And up next, we're going to take some iridescent red. I've really, really been enjoying these iridescent colors. So if you don't have any of these, uh, pick a couple up to add to your arsenal of paint schemes. I really like how simple they are to paint and you get such a nice sheen from it. Uh, the plan with the iridescent red is to cover all of the blue on the back of the bait, the front we're going to do another color with so we're going to try to keep the red back here right on top of the blue and off of the gill plate there will be a little bit of overspray kind of like how that orange did right there but like i said we'll be doing another color there later so behind the gill plate and all the way back we'll be doing the iridescent red I'm going to hit a little bit of this iridescent red up on the nose mouth area as well. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Looking pretty bass snacky-ish to me. The next color we're going to be doing is going to be some opaque black. And I'm gonna do that up on the gill plate and along the back of the bait. And we're gonna do just a little bit up here on top too. Now this is one of those where that iridescent red would probably look just fine and I might be making a mistake by using the black. But the black is what I've done on previous patterns and it looks good. So hopefully on this bait and using my stencil we'll get the same results. If not, you guys can shame me in the comments for not doing the iridescent red up on the gill plate. We're gonna go back on to our little helping hand stand here to do the back. And while we're here, I'm gonna give a real light coating of this black on the back. I, I don't want it, I don't want to get rid of our blue completely, but I do want the back of the bait to be just a hair darker. Just like that. And ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have for paint. So that means it is time to glue in some eyes. And I think for eyes, we're gonna go with these kind of orangish red color ones. Woo, that's a lot of glue. I'm confident this eye won't fall out. And there we have it one custom built laser cut fishing lure ready for clear coat. So my plan is 
I'm going to get the lure lip glued into place and then get some clear coat on it. We'll come back, take a look at what it looks like all finished up, along with doing a nice little swim test in my test tank here in the garage. Right now, lakes are partially frozen, so getting out and actually fishing with it's kind of a challenge, but I think later this summer or the spring, we'll get some actual fishing videos done. So I'm gonna let this air dry and cure, let that paint all off gas for several hours, if not overnight, and I'll get the clear coat on it. And I will see you guys here in a few.